Hello, everybody, and welcome. Yes, I got bored of sitting behind a desk. Who could blame me? Especially when we have toys like this lying around. So I thought today we'd get a little more inflammatory and have a look at using oxyacetylene. Namely, how to set up the gas, what the flame should look like, and if you're lucky, a little bit of brazing. Okie koki. So let's start on the cylinders themselves. So here we have our oxygen and our acetylene. These funny looking doodars on the top are the regulators. You can see everything is zero across the board. So first thing we're gonna do is go to our torch and make sure that these guys are both nice and closed, which they are. And we're gonna come and check these regulators are all the way closed as well. So now we're okay to open up the bottles. And we do that by cracking these little valves at the top. Yes, this is a makeshift one. The old one was not very healthy. Now we open these bottles, we can see on this dial and this dial, we're actually reading the cylinder pressure in there. So oxygen's okay, acetylene, we are a little low on that. But now we've got pressure going into the regulators themselves, we can start to pressurize our lines. We do that by just screwing these in. I'm gonna screw the oxygen in until we get to around 20, I'll explain why in a moment, and the acetylene to something about seven. There we go. And now what we need to do is balance the flow of these gases so that as they come through the torch, they're gonna to be at the right pressure. So to do that, we're gonna open up the oxygen line, which is the green one. And we're gonna see that that pressure's dropped slightly, but we're gonna regulate that down to about 10 bar. Just like that. And then we're gonna close that off again on the torch. Now the acetylene, we're gonna do half of the oxygen. So we're gonna crack it open on the torch. That's the oxygen. There we go. And we're gonna regulate that to about five. And then make sure you close it off on the torch. So now we know as we're running this, oxygen on the line is about 10 PSI and the acetylene on the line is about five PSI. That's a general rule of thumb. You might find a bit different other places, but roughly oxygen double the, the line pressure of the acetylene. Okay, interesting side note number one, the lines that come back to these cylinders end in these little unions here. The oxygen is completely flat and the acetylene has these little divots taken out all the way around. Now this lets you know it is a left-handed thread. All flammable gases will have a, this type of union on with these notches taken out and the oxygen is just a normal right-handed thread. So there's no way of putting an acetylene or any other flammable gas onto a non-flammable gas receptacle. Interesting fact numero two. This acetylene cylinder, not just full of acetylene. Acetylene as a gas doesn't like being compressed on its own. So we have to soak it into a big matrix. It's kind of like a sponge, or as the French call it, l'éponge. And inside of this l'éponge, there's another chemical called acetone. And the acetylene is dissolved into the acetone like carbon dioxide in Coke or Pepsi, depending on your brand. So this turns this into a big bottle of Danger Pepsi. And just like Danger Pepsi, you don't want to open it on your side. That is how you get ants. So never use a bottle of acetone on its side. And if it has been on its side, once you've turned it the right way up, leave it for a little while for all of that acetone to come down through l'éponge. Okie dokie, the fun bit. So now it's time to start cooking. So the way we do this, first thing we're gonna do is open up the acetylene line. And then we're gonna slowly introduce oxygen to get the flame that we need. So we've got our striker, way easier than doing it with a lighter, which you're not really supposed to do. But we're gonna crack our acetylene just a little, and we're gonna strike that flame. Look at that. And you can see how dirty that is as well. And now we can slowly introduce oxygen 
Look at that. That's a way nicer flame. And then we balance this to get the flame that we need, which we're going to come on to now. Righty ho. So the very first flame we see when we strike the torch is a pure acetylene flame. It's very orange and very, very dirty. More often than not, it's kicking off fluffy black stuff as well, which is actually carbon. The only thing this is used for is moving on to the other flame types or when you want to light up a cigarette in very dramatic fashion. As you slowly crank up the oxygen, you'll get an incredibly long and bright flame known as a carburizing flame or a feather. With this flame, there's more acetylene present than oxygen. So this flame is used when you really don't want oxygen getting into your weld pool or your braze. It is also much less useful for lighting cigarettes. As you increase the oxygen further, you reach a point where the mix of the two gases is stoichiometrically perfect. In Goldilocks terms, it is just right, with the acetylene gas being completely burned by the oxygen and the surrounding air. This flame has a light blue inner cone and a dark blue kind of feeding to colourless outer cone. Because the acetylene is completely burned in this flame, it's described as chemically neutral. It won't give excess carbon or cause rapid oxidation of what you're trying to do. And if you keep on cranking that oxygen up, you'll get, surprise, surprise, an oxidizing flame. This is the hottest flame and it has a tiny blue cone. And it also sounds like a rocket taking off. Because of the oxygen content, it causes all sorts of unwanted oxides and nastiness. So you won't really want to use this on steel unless you cut in straight through it. Okay, as promised, cheeky bit of brazing. So this pipe looks pretty fresh, but to get a good braze, what we want to do is just tidy up the surface with a bit of sandpaper. So, cue some jazz. There we go, beautiful. All right, so we're nice and clean, and we're gonna be brazing this little elbow on. Uh, to do that, we're gonna use this copper braze, this copper breeze has its own flux at this point. If it didn't, you'd be adding a bit of flux to this, but we don't need to because of the breezing rod that we're using. Okay, so we're all in place. We've given ourselves a fairly neutral flame, and we're gonna start just by heating up the pipe before it goes into the joint. And pretty soon you'll be able to see these colors dancing around, letting us know when we're ready to go. So I start heating up the joint as well. And by the distance of this flame, um, we can control our heat in the weld as well. So let's start putting some of this guy in. Uh, this is tricky with the camera in the way. <laughs> And let it melt and the hotter we get it the better that flux runs out into the joint i'm just going to go around and get the back sorry if the focus goes weird So yeah, I've kind of splodged it there. But apart from that, I think we've got a pretty good braze. So let's wait for this to cool down and we'll give him a clean. All right, now he's cooled a bit, let's tidy him up. So cue some jazz. Okay, we have a nice looking braze. It's wicked in really well all the way around, well wetted. Definitely splodged it at the bottom. But apart from that, we have a pretty, pretty looking breeze. Well, 
I thought I'd splodge it at the bottom, but it turns out I've just done a perfect braise. It happens. Don't be jelly. So I hope this video helped. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.